HRN listeners. As we celebrate our 15th year, we are deepening our commitment to giving voice to the next generation of food system storytellers, and we need your help. Our internship and fellowship programs help activate new possibilities for underrepresented and underestimated young people through experiential journalism, audio engineering, and production training. Through these unique programs, HRN helps food equity stewards build essential workforce readiness skills that expand their potential and foster economic mobility. Please consider supporting these critical programs. And with a minimum donation, you can be entered to win a dinner for two at an amazing restaurant in one of eight cities and tickets to a concert at a great venue in one of those cities. We have incredible partners across the country who have donated as they also share our passion for helping to educate the next generation of food system storytellers. Check out heritageradionetwork.org 15 to donate and enter to win today. That's heritageradionetwork.org 15 to donate and enter to win today. And make sure you donate before March 31st. Thank you. You're listening to The Farm Report. I'm Jack Inslee. Heather Hyman. And we are here live a bit late, 520. It's all good, though. Happy St. Patrick's Day, y'all. Uh, it's March 17th. We are sitting here with Mr. John Hoppin. Hello. Hello, everyone. We're excited to have John Hoppin with us here today. He um, is what you could call a new member of the Heritage Foods USA team. He also has a little connection here to Roberta's, where we're broadcasting out of a uh, the backyard on our rooftop uh, garden, <laughs> rooftop farm radio station. And I think his album is number one on iTunes. Is that what I heard? That's right. Wow. And the royalty checks are coming in, but check it out. All you have to do, type in J-O-H-N-H-O-P-P-I-N. That's my name, John Hoppin, in the search uh, field in the upper right-hand corner of your iTunes. And you can cop my album called Shut Down Corner. came out March 8th. I think he has a uh, you have a, a station on Last FM too. That's right. There's you can listen to the album. You can preview it on Last FM. I don't know Amazon. There's a it's available all over the internet. The internet is going wild for me, frankly. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, we're happy to have you here with us today. Um, John has come aboard Heritage Foods USA to kind of help regionalize our mail order system. And what that means, um, I'll let him explain a little bit. Yeah, basically, I met with Patrick here at Roberta's last end of last summer. Um, who's Patrick is the president over at Heritage Foods, and he said to me, "You know, we're thinking about going to two distribution centers. Uh, they everything comes out of Missouri right now." So I said, "Well, we can look into that, figure out how that's going to work." And look at the numbers, see if that makes sense. And, you know, I told him at the time, I think it would. And indeed it did. Uh, so we're now shipping live out of two DCs, West and East Coast, Virginia, Sam Edwards in Surrey, Virginia, right across the river from Colonial Williamsburg and uh, from Caney Foods uh, in San Luis Obispo feeding the West Coast. Now, Heather, what was uh, what was the situation like before this change? Well, before this change, everything was shipping either direct from the farm or the slaughterhouse, which um, most slaughterhouses, you know, aren't necessarily um, set up to be what a DC is, a distribution center. Mm -hmm. So the costs were a little higher. Um, it meant that, you know, people were paying for the shipping and the box and things of that nature all for one product. John helped make it possible for people to start you know, adding more items into their online shopping cart for a, a lower price in the end because of how we're now able to ship our product. Um, John, what do you think, um, how do you think it's going so far? Well, we just went live, you know, the email came out Monday night. Um, so it, it, last week we were testing the system, but I mean, we've had a greater order volume, but the bottom line is for the customer, for the client on the website, they can log in and order whatever they want for as much as 35% off. You know, so that's a big that's a big number and that savings number gets bigger if you add more items into the cart because we used to charge savings in the item price and now we're charging 
one shipping for your order, and then we're saying, okay, shipping for your order, it's this size order, it's this uh, shipping amount, and then just whatever you can fit, however many items you can fit in the box. So it's the item and shipping is separate. Now, the thing that's kind of unique about, you know, this marriage between John Hopton and Heritage Foods is his background has really not much to do with food necessarily. Um, Can you tell us where you came from before you started working a little bit with Heritage? Well, something that people say about me a lot is that I had a lot of careers. Uh, I went to school uh, for fine arts. So I had a, I ran a group called It Can Change, actually for about six years and we did exhibitions internationally um so did that and then i wanted to get into business and so i got into corporate retail working for like you know the big names in that industry like limited brands you know victoria's secret bath and body works and taylor doing logistics stuff to distributing uh their items well, it sounds like your name of your first uh, project, It Can Change, has followed you to where you are now, which mm-hmm. is making a big change. Um, what's really special about what John's doing for Heritage and for the farmers that Heritage Foods works with is he's really helping make the food that's coming from these independent farmers more affordable to people at home. Um, and that's really the ultimate goal in what we've done with setting up these new distribution centers. Yeah, now I have a question, John. Does this bring the prices of Heritage Foods down closer to the status quo what else is out there i think you can log on to any of our competitors and check out their prices and i feel pretty confident we'll meet the i know our major competitors mm-hmm. in many i you know, i can't say that every single item will be cheaper but what i can say is we're competing now with the big boys and also in many cases we're whipping them yeah, we that's win. Incredible. And when he's talking about the big boys, he's talking about a non comparable product. He's talking right. about not a, a, you know, a breed specific, a pasture raised necessarily, um, you know, piece of meat. So that's what's really special here is that we are up against, you know, people that are providing, you know, food that is, you know, charged with corners being cut in the process. And that's not happening on our end. And we're still matching those prices now. So we definitely thank John for his help with that. Yeah, the bottom line is, you know, you want four steaks. You can look at, I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna call them out, but you know, you can, you can try and find ribeye steaks online cheaper than ours, and with a comparable, with a breed specific product, with sustainable pasture, pasture raised, uh, no hormones, no antibiotics. You won't find it. I don't think you will. And if you do, give me a call. Uh, my email address is john, J-O-H-N, at heritagefoodsusa.com. And then we, could talk, think. And then we could talk further about what we yeah, can do Yeah, I would to love to know. I would love to know. <laughs> Any executives for other companies listening, let's talk. Well, yeah. John, what do you think that you could you know, bring to other you know, small businesses that are trying to, 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 to really grow? Well, this isn't actually my first small business like i said a lot about art said a lot about corporate stuff but also you know uh that's why i'm here at roberta's i've been here since the opening day and at the opening party i was washing dishes because (laughs) i was living in the warehouse uh four blocks from here where all the people who started this um lived at the same time too so I'm, I've always been involved with these kind of entrepreneurs, small business. I worked at a jewelry business in Brooklyn that was manufacturing in a loft live workspace. And I said, hey, we can make more money. Put this in a retail space and the retail space will pay for it. It'll get the workers out of your house every day. Mm-hmm. It'll give you a space to design uh, a production area and an office to do the business. So. That was my first really um, kind of foray into that world, and and Heritage is continuing that. So what haven't you done? I've been a cook. I just came from a restaurant in Greenpoint. I ordered two split heads, two Berkshire split heads, which you can get on the website at a 35% discount from what they were before last week. (laughs) <laughs> just to give you an idea uh now tell we, us what to do with a pig's head so we got those we boned them out uh you over, take the eyeballs at, out? over in river barrel river barrel is wow. the restaurant on franklin avenue uh in greenpoint 
right right up uh, i think it's like green and franklin so uh went over there my friend johnny myers the chef there so we went into the basement um boned out the heads covered him in kimchi cured him for four days then we rolled him up last night like into tornishon like a cylinder of meat basically with the skin and the ears went through the eye the skin is on the outside Whoa. we've been braising it it's going to come out at seven o'clock so i'm going to be over there in greenpoint taking those out i also have to give a shout out to dave uh there's a wine store just opened across the street from river barrel he used to be the chef de cuisine at dressler for a couple of years he's been helping out but basically we're kind of ghetto sous viding them for about <laughs> 24 hours and then we're gonna make them into pucks get fried with a uh, uh, little you know mayo dressing and a bitter green salad and maybe some like dehydrated pistachios if we want to get really fancy i don't know what we're kind of sounds like the mama fuko sambar little um have you had those? it has a, we're making so i have four split heads <laughs> one of them i'm gonna make just like like the recipe is pretty much crib straight from the Momofuku Momofuku cookbook. Yeah, and those are actually it's our um, Newman um, Berkshire pork. Are they those use. those are like the fried little cakes. Yeah, with the, exactly. Yeah, it's delicious. It's yeah, stuffed with pigs. So I was so like, good. let's Head make cheese. those. That's really good. I also want to make some. You can roll them up, make kind of porchetta di testa. They call it, which I think is kind of a bastardization of the <laughs> idea of <laughs> porchetta. porchetta. <laughs> but it's head porchetta, basically sliced thin. And then that gets served or fried or, you know, thrown into a salad. So and one's in the oven right now braising. I'm probably going to eat the jowls for dinner tonight. Intense. Well, why don't we take a quick break and we'll, we'll come right back here on the Heritage Radio Network. You can call in. We're still here live. 718-497-2128. And thanks again to uh, S. Wallace Edwards and Sons. Listening to the Heritage Radio Network. This is the Farm Report. I'm Jack Inslee. Heather Hyman. And we are at Roberta's Pizza, 261 Moore Street. There's kids running around outside making me nervous. Old people celebrating St. Patrick's Don't Day. Don't let kids and old people make you nervous, man. <sighs> I can't help it. You were one. <laughs> you were one and you will be one. Oh, no. If I'm lucky. If you're lucky. Yes. Yeah. Every day is a present. So we're here talking with John Business Hoppin. Huh. That, and, I'm uh, not that comfortable with that. No. Uh, I'm not. I'm not a hundred percent a businessman. What I can I say about you're myself? You're a businessman. Creative. I am a businessman, but also <laughs> creative logistics. You know, operations. Uh, my dad, you know, uh, ran East Coast for Skyway for ten years. Hmm. If you remember Skyway shipping operation, so oh, wow, that's kind of runs in the family. So, so we'll say logistics then. I like logistics. I've logistics. been considering. I considered an MBA before the crisis <laughs> in two thousand seven, and then I thought maybe that isn't the good idea. But I still have a part of me that wants to be a risk manager. Or you know, working a, get a get an advanced degree in logistics. Wow! All Even right. with a number one album on iTunes, <laughs> that's... I'd like you to know that on HeritageFoodsUSA.com, dot com right now, thirty eight out of fifty four pork products that were existing last week are now cheaper. That's awesome. I yeah. thought it was forty three. I, I actually I just made up that number, but I used the conservative one. It Sorry. was the real number is forty three out of fifty four. Wow. wow! And that's not just pork; it's I'm blowing pork, myself beef, away. and poultry. I know it's amazing. So we're really yeah, we're stoked. cheaper all across categories. Wonderful. Well, what do you? What, what's a lesson that you could give to some other slow businesses, as we sometimes like to call ourselves? Do the math, man. Don't be afraid of doing the math on things. Uh, that's the way you get answers. And I, in, in businesses, people are afraid of it. Like, you know, if you got to go home and get the beans out and put them on the table and make them into groups to figure out hmm. what's going on, 
I by if all you means gotta visualize do it. it. Yeah, whatever you need to do. I don't have a math degree. You know, uh, you just look at a problem and try and solve it. What has the biggest challenge been so far in this transition for Heritage Foods for you? Is it working with me? <laughs> no, 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 not at all. It's it's the logistical challenges. One of which they're not you. They're I'm they're they're. Well, I mean, you know, probably my biggest challenge or everyone else's biggest challenge is probably working with me. So I know how you feel. Uh, but I think. The key to it is with Heritage has been about trying to stay true to the vision, which is not about making the most money possible. Definitely not. That's not what it's about. It's about coming back here tomorrow and having the same earth or better. Mm -hmm. That's how I look at it. Yeah. You know, that's why I'm involved. That's what attracted me. I've been a CSA member since the early 90s um, in California. So, uh it's been a, a, a focus. Yeah, of you've mine. grown up around sustainable agriculture pretty much your whole life, where you were, right? Basic. Well, uh, uh, not really. Well, I grew uh, up. I grew up eating spaghettios in the basement, you know. So, but then but at a certain point, I, I rebelled against that. And there, in in Northern California, there's all kinds of venues for. I had a friend that was doing the website. She said you should get into this CSA, and I said. You know, me, I did the math on it. I said, that's going to be cheaper. <laughs> you know, so and it, it was. Sense. It was. And you were supporting something good at the same time. Chef Boyardee just called in and said that you're a traitor. Look, I I, I had some bad experiences, you know, with my great peas. One time I was a kid, I got sent to the hospital about eight months old. I My parents went outside to manage to fit the whole package of frozen peas up my nose and they had to give me oh, like a, no. a pump neti pot kind oh, of to man. get the oh. the pea residue in. and my dad said for like a week uh the i was like dribbling green objects oh, that's out of no my good no that does not sound like fun it's a rough life but now i have this i have a real you know i don't think i don't think if you serve your kid real peas they could get real peas up their <laughs> nose you know probably lesson. not that's a lesson learned <laughs> well um, now that you're working for, you know, what I and what we consider, you know, to be, a, in the words of Slow Food, a good, clean and fair business, what is something that, you know, for working for some of the big men that you'd say you don't appreciate about a bigger, better business? You know, I had a great experience working in big places, mm -hmm. but I'm aware that it takes those kind of places. Can I swear? Yes, you can. I, it takes those kind of places to fuck the world up the way it is currently really fucked up and that attitude of like everything is secondary to the dollar bill i can't ever get with that but i will tell you in those places with all that money mm -hmm. i learned a lot mm. uh because first of all you can't just drop a hundred thousand dollars you, you're fired you know mm -hmm. and that kind of expectation level and stress level was hard but it was also like a trial by fire mm -hmm. well and so i wouldn't John. give it up I want to ask you what what excites you outside of it's all baseball of this. season, baby. Okay, <laughs> baseball, really? I mean, that's what it is right now. It's basketball's what, what? coming. I'm not into NCAA. Sorry okay. to everybody. Okay. Uh, but no I, March Madness for you. I don't get mad at March. I, I'll be <laughs> I'll be like half watching Tiger Woods or something. But it's it's baseball all the and way. Your team is. I, I'm an Oakland A's fan, uh -huh. but. I live, you know, that's where I was raised. I have an, I have the Oakland A's, you know, I have a little bear from when I was like one year old, the little stuffed bear. I still got it in my apartment. Now, what about some slow business practices for uh, sports franchises? A lot of money going around there. You know, I have been trying to get involved with sports franchises, not not for the money, but because of the there's so much there's so much money that that means the potential for positive change is greater. Right. Um, if those people can get five million dollars to sit on the bench, uh, we can do a lot with that. And like you know, here at Roberta's with the farm heritage, with what we're doing, that kind of capital and making those kind of connections in my book. They just haven't been made yet because well, I know it makes sense to fund the kind of enterprise that we're all undertaking. Definitely. Totally. And if we can create more of a community, which is what we're doing here with this network and with our farmers, you know, um, people will really get to start to share in, in the good. So next year, Heritage Radio Network brought to you by the New York Knicks. Make it happen. I hope not. I'm not a Knicks fan. I'm a Warriors fan. You know, I love the Warriors. 
I love the Warriors. You know, a small team uh, creates great problems. So you got to really. Be you stole on your our draft pick game. this year. We wanted Steph Curry. Curry you all stole day. Him. You all stole day. him. He's a great ball handler. He could do anything. I know. They said he couldn't do it. Small school, but. That's like uh, us in Heritage. You know, this is a small school. We were about to go big. That's what I'm here for. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to bring those prices down to make it accessible for you and me. You know, like, uh, and I think we've gone, look online, look at our competitors and tell me we haven't Mm -hmm. done that. And that's That's all. HeritageFoodsUSA.com is where you could look. So one more question, John, If, if I have a modest budget, and I want to buy a good piece of meat or pork. What are you picking on the website? What's the best value? <laughs> Look, I'm a steak man. Okay. I'm not gonna lie to you. Okay. Like uh, I don't. When it comes to what I put in my mouth, value doesn't come na- naturally. But if you want a value cut of meat, I would go shoulders. Okay. You know, I would go shoulders. If that's something you can prepare a different way. You can make rillettes. You can make steaks out of it. You can do that all out of one shoulder cut. I could have sworn you were going to say a smoked ham. I just served a 22-pound ham, put it in the oven for about three hours and 20 minutes. And how long did that last you? It lasted me one dinner party. Like we we, we we finish. I have um, a little. I uh, my neighbor is a ninety two year old. I gotta give a shout out to my neighbor, Eugenia Capazzo Tato Bien. Um, she's ninety two. She's Puerto Rican. She lives across the hall. So I said, okay, what better to do with a couple slices? She doesn't eat a lot. So <laughs> uh, I brought over some ham and some coleslaw we made. So a twenty two pound ham. Yeah. You were able to serve how many people? 18 pounds ham. Let me tell you how I made it first because I heard a lot of... There's different ways you can make these hams. They're smoked. They're already cooked. Like Mm -hmm. you could chop it and put it in a sandwich. Totally. But what I like to do with that bone-in ham is put it in the oven at about 300, 325 for three and a half hours and uh, then take it out, cover it in in a glaze of like brown sugar, mustard, and bourbon. Damn. Thick, you know, and oh, you got to score the fat first into squares because nice. as it cooks, though, that'll render and and moisten it. So about three and a half hours in, you baste it, turn it up to three fifty. Half an hour, put it back in. Half an hour later, take it out again, baste it again, and at four hours and twenty minutes, okay, you should be ready to take that out, slice it down to the bone, and serve. And it is the jam. We had people at local restaurant tours around here. And even uh, Roberta's people over there eating on it and saying, and uh, people called me or still calling me saying it was the best ham they ever ate. Mm, nice. Impressive. Well, we're glad to hear that, especially with Easter coming up. A lot of people, you know, they serve those as their centerpieces for their meals. So you can definitely go online, check out everything we've got to offer ham, beef, poultry, but, uh, you know, all cuts of pork um, definitely available for you and your, um, you know, holiday um parties i hate the phrase but you are a true renaissance man i have to say it and i want to say it's easter step your game up you know it's ham time you know (laughs) and if you're not coming with ham get that weak shit out of here (laughs) (laughs) but thank you we thank you for joining us today on the the heritage farm report we thank edwards for sponsoring today's show we'll be back here live again next wednesday thank you to nat wiener our engineer happy saint patrick's day happy birthday francesca Francesca, love you john hopping on itunes now yeah